going on? Okay, today we're going to show you guys how to do the repair for the Audi Q7 control board. Um, if you look down here, the controls stops working on here because I spilled the coffee and the liquid got in there. And as you can see right now, I'm having problems with my screen turning on. It'll come on, but it's delayed. Or it won't come on. There we go. None of the buttons are lighting up. None of these buttons will do anything. And it will shut down in a second. There you go. So it's shut down. None of my buttons work. Navigation. I've lost everything. What happened is the water got in there and fried out the circuit board. I managed to find a circuit board on eBay. Brand new. There's a supplier. And it was $60 from Hong Kong, I believe. I'll post a link in the descriptions and show you guys where to get it. So I just bought it. This one's still not working. This is your basic trim removal kit. You get something like this to remove this. It makes the job a lot easier. So here we go. I'm going to start off by pulling on this. Bear with me. There we go. There's your first step to pop this off. You can pull this out. There should be a clip on here. Somewhere on here. Let me get in here. So you push this button down to remove this. Push this aside. Now, I'm trying to find a piece to get in here. This is a little trickier part. So you guys don't have a trim, trim removal kit. This will come up if you refund it up here or maybe even stick a screwdriver in the edge there. I'm just going to use this just to be on the safe side so my wife doesn't kill me. Now I'll find, try and find the thinnest tool that I have, which will probably be this one, and I'll try and put it in here, just to get, get something. I'm going to shut this down. Bear with me. I might even have reefed on it last time. There's a combination of the two, I believe. My wife cringes as I do that, eh? It definitely was a combination of the two last time. I've removed it once, but I put it back together while I waited for the board to come in so I could teach you guys. There we go. So, I didn't need the tool as you could see. I can put these away safely. Now in here, you're going to have a clip here, a clip here, um, sorry, like a, har a harness, these adapters. They're hard for you to see right now, but I'll show you in a minute what I'm talking about. I can't remember how these release exactly. Somewhere in here, okay. And I'll show you how these come off in a second. Once I figure it out myself, no. <laughs> so. Should be one more here. So you just push this tab to release this one. And then on these here, you just push this white button in to release them. I couldn't see, but so you guys know. Push that in to release these. Push this little tab to release this one. There you go. So now it's out. Now the tricky part, which I found a trick for when I took it out last time, is to take the silver trim off kind of a pain in the butt to do. I seen one guy do it with a screwdriver. I don't know how he did it. What I found is if you just take a tooth toothpick and push it in each one of these. I'm not sure how I did it last time. Maybe I went 
that way. I definitely did it from the bottom. Okay, so what I did is I took the toothpick and I pushed one toothpick along the side of each one of these clips. Because the guy who did it with the screwdriver, he broke one of them. Okay, so I've almost already released this one side. Yeah, this is my toothpick trick. It's it's awesome. I don't know if they probably have a special tool, tool for it. But like I said, the guy used a screwdriver. I don't even know how he did it with the, just a screwdriver. But he broke his clips. Me, my wife hates when I break anything in the car, so... Almost there. I don't know if you can see that, but I put a toothpick in between each one of those, lifted it off, came off beautifully. I'm trying to rush because I, you know, I don't know how long of a video I can post on YouTube. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna pause the video right now and I'm gonna come back because I need to grab some tools to take these bolts up. Okay, so I got the tool here. It's a torque. I'd love to tell you it's a T15, but that's probably in the wrong spot. So it is a torque. I'm not sure which size it is. Now, like I said before, um, Audi wanted like $6,000 for this fix. They wanted $3,000 just for the board, they told me. And I, I managed to find it online, brand new, from Hong Kong for $59. I'll try and post you guys the link. I don't know how long that price will stay that. So you've seen everything I've done so far. So far. There's four torques right here. Once I take this off, this is like a cage. Then I'll have four more torques. And then I'll have access to the board. Now I have taken the board out. I did try to clean it as best I could with a couple alcohol swabs, but it didn't work. What I think I'm going to do after this is I've seen somebody soak the board in isopropanol alcohol and uh, apparently it doesn't wreck it, so I'm going to see if that will fix it. So there we go. So now we freed this. There's the controls, the very last thing. There's those last four screws, and then we got access to the boards. They will not come out unless you take the knobs off. They just pull off. This one is a little harder to pull off, but it does come off. So there we go. Four more bolts, screws, whatever you want to call them. So hopefully this all works smoothly as I expect it to work. You know, when it first happened and I was like, I just finished putting the navigation in here. Um, I did a retro and this, this, this car actually didn't come with the navigation. So I installed it separately as, as long as well as the, what was it? The satellite radio, sorry. So I installed those two and you know, so it really hurt once this all stopped working. So here we go, the moment of truth in here. And again, this has four more of those same clips that that silver trim had. So I just poked these screwdrivers in there and hope for the best. If you look, I don't know if you can see, I kind of just push it to the side so it pushes over the lip. All right, so now it's pretty much separated, I just need to get it apart somehow. Oh, that there's a sticker on here too. 
It actually helps hold that together. There she goes. So here's the old one right here. They put this little rubber casing on it that's supposed to stop it from getting it wet, but it doesn't didn't help at all. So I haven't had a chance to compare these two side by side yet, but they look pretty good to me. Here's the new one, here's the old one. Um, as far as the difference, that I can tell. If you look on the, the old board, there's numbers here. And it says uh, PREH 13248149 This actually has the same numbers. It's like the only difference is this one has a sticker. The original one from Audi. This is the one from Hong Kong. If you ask me, they buy them from Hong Kong and then send them to Audi. Anyway, here's the old one. Here's the new one. Put the rubber casing back on. It all seems to be lining up on that pretty good. Throw that one back together, right? See, and the sticker's still good. I didn't break it, so I mean, if yours is under warranty, I guess if it's under warranty, you won't be in this situation, right? <laughs> so, I just don't want to forget anything and then have to separate something again. Oh, looks like I broke that clip. Broke a little bit there. No big deal. No, it's still holding in place because all the other ones are good, so if you really wanted, you could put a piece of glue there, but it is what it is. So yeah, so now I need to remember the order I took this all apart. Dial works. This has a little rubber band in it all the time. I'm not sure where it goes. Last time I just put it over here, it seemed to be fine. I just put it on there like that. It seemed like there was a little track for it. Unless you just push it back on. That's good to go. And we got this. First we gotta put our screws back in. So the silver one's going first. Now I'm not no professional car installer, car audio installer or anything like that. I just refuse to pay top dollar to get things fixed. So if I'm doing this like somebody who doesn't know what they're doing, like if I look like I don't know what I'm doing, it's because uh, I'm just kind of learning as I go, right? But first of all, that board... Audi told me like three thousand dollars for it, and I picked it up for sixty. So how much did I save right there? See, and again, those that little clip that I kind of broke doesn't matter once you put these screws in anyway. But yeah, and then by installing this myself, I saved myself another three thousand dollars. So in the time that you guys watch this video, I saved almost $6,000. So somebody who doesn't do this professional, professionally, I just, you know, I might as well start doing this professionally.
and this is going to be my first video on YouTube. So, me talking a lot and everything not being perfect, that's, you know, bear with me. All I'm trying to do is save you guys money. I'm not trying to make the best video in the world. I just, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that are in the same situation. I know I talked to one guy I met, and he told me he bought his Q7. And this isn't just a Q7, there's A6s and a couple other ones. So there we go, we got those eight screws back in. And I believe it was this was the next thing I had to put on. Now remember, this one was really hard to take off. It's very easy to put back on. Hopefully I was supposed to put it on already, but we'll find out. So now... I'm going to plug this stuff back in. These ones you won't be able to see because I kind of have to hold it down here while I do it. I don't know how that just turned on because the keys aren't even in there. But somehow that turned on. Making sure before I click all this back in that it's in the right spot. Alright, so that's back in there. The last thing to plug in is this. Before I did any of this, I should have turned the key on to make sure it's working, I think. Actually, I should probably do it now. In case i got to rip it all back out and send something back to China. I've got lights, which is somewhat of a good sign. Happy? I'm very happy. Navigation is not active. None of this stuff had worked before. I couldn't put on my radio. There's satellite radio. Anyway, I'll turn that down. Push this back into its place. I can find out exactly where it went. Now my wife won't kill me. Everything's back together. Everything's working. Navigation. Car. Set up. Navigation is not active. Bluetooth. Anyway, there you go. That completes this tutorial. I mean, I hope this helps a lot of you guys. Hopefully this video wasn't too crazy to watch. I'm going to watch it after and try and get it uploaded. But like I said, my main purpose is to try and help you guys out and help you fix things yourself. Because, I mean, people think as you drive a, a luxury vehicle, you got all kinds of money. Well, I could drive these vehicles because I can learn to fix them myself. So do yourself a favor and 
don't be afraid. You've seen how easy that was. I think my, you know, my eight-year-old daughter could probably do it. So good luck. If you have any questions, get a hold of me. Um, I'll try and put some other things. Out. There's a group on the Audi Q7, Audi Q7 group on Facebook. I've put uh, some information on there, and I'll do a couple other blogs as well. Anyway, guys, take care. Good luck to you.